clickbait title. Reading licensing agreements, so uh, you don't have to. You're welcome. Hello, anyone, everyone, and welcome to the Week I Review. My name is Alec Kubismeyer, and today I want to talk about a few different royalty-free music licensing services. If you were one of the handful of people who watched my last video, you may have noticed that at a couple of points the words dropped away and were replaced by some music over travel b-roll. This kind of thing, a hallmark of very successful vloggers like Casey Neistat or Peter McKinnon, is a way to break up the monotony of the static shots of my face that I promise in my about page. And in a concerted effort to make these videos more dynamic when appropriate, it's something I want to experiment with more. For the sake of both finances and convenience, the best option for an aspiring creator is one of these royalty-free music subscription services. And as someone who will ultimately be putting his money where his mouth is and subscribing to one of these services, I thought it might be helpful for others in the same position to document my process. I will be putting three services head to head to head. Artlist.io, Epidemic Sound, and Soundstripe. Why these? Well, because two of them targeted me on Facebook at great times, and the third was recommended by Peter McKinnon himself. I'm not going to officially split this up into sections, but on screen right now, you can see the time codes for when I start to talk about specific aspects of the services, if you want to just skip ahead to those. If you don't have time for the whole video, I would recommend the licensing and pricing section as it goes pretty deep. It's important to understand first and foremost why you, or in this case, I, want music at all. In my case, it's pretty specific. I speak at a reasonable clip in these videos, a pace that has actually increased over the past few months, and I am trying to convey as much information as possible in as little time as possible. Music distracts from that fundamental goal. I know because I tried a version of it all the way back in episode 1.1. Even the most inoffensive Muzak detracts. But during a transition, heck, I've been doing that since day one with the drum fills that bookend my blathering. And B-roll is something I have been trying to work on since the beginning as well, but have never felt that it was cohesive enough to justify its own little musical interlude, last week I wanted to try something new. And once I had committed to the idea of doing that, doing this, it was time to go through all of the thousands of songs now available to me. The choices are overwhelming, so it's important that whichever service I use has good filtering capabilities, and those go hand in hand with good design. Of these, Epidemic Sound is by far the least impressive. It's the oldest service, and you can tell. Where Artlist and Soundstripe are clearly designed with modern aesthetics in mind, Epidemic Sound looks like it was made in the mid-2000s. Nowhere is this more apparent than in the placement of the filters. Above the music. This is dumb. If you scroll down to the bottom of the page and decide you want to add another parameter, you have to scroll back up and see what is available and then make the decision. It also makes paginations as opposed to endless scrolling a requirement since they can't make you scroll down too far lest you never make it back up. Also, this is not a complete sentence. I'm furious. The others keep the tags in an always accessible side menu. Artlist gets double wide during selection, while Soundstripe is single wide at all times. Between them, it's really a wash, and I imagine you could be equally content with either. It's a question of preference, I guess. The quality of the filters is better on the younger services as well, though they all use semi-arbitrary tagging systems that involve placing songs into various buckets. I find epidemics to be the least helpful. Genres, mood, movement, and places. Alongside that are generalized energy, tempo, and length filters. 
It's not clear to me what energy gives you that movement can't or what movement can give you that mood can't. But since everything is so broad anyway, I guess it doesn't really matter. Artlist is similar but more streamlined, with video themes serving the same purpose as places and just one mood category. What it has that Epidemic lacks is an instrument filter, allowing you to choose piano or acoustic guitar or what have you if you have a more specific sound in mind. This is a fairly significant oversight on the part of the older service. It's also got a slider for selecting exact lengths of songs and a quick access to curated lists, which are nice to have but less meaningfully different. Soundstripe beats them both badly. Alongside the instrument filter, Soundstripe also has a simple but oh so obvious filter for instrumental versus vocal, and I cannot fathom why the others don't have the same. There are also more in-depth options like a key selection and specific BPM slider alongside the generic pace. And it's not like the other services don't have this information. They just don't surface it like that. Soundstripe then is much better for someone who has a specific idea of what they are looking for. Epidemic Sound is for someone who has no idea. Artlist is somewhere in between which is a pretty good summation of these services, to be honest. Spoiler for the second half of this video. Epidemic is unique in that every one of its songs can be downloaded as a complete MP3 or as a collection of stems. Did you dig that bass line but find the drums too aggressive? Well, just grab that bass. About 10 to 15% of Soundstripe's catalog has stems available as well, which is better than nothing but also not a whole lot. Artlist has no stems, but both it and Soundstripe offer alternate versions of many songs. Oftentimes these are just instrumentals, but it's something. As for the quality of the music itself, that's really going to be up to the person, though in terms of volume, Epidemic crushes it. They have over 30,000 songs, which is multiple times that of the other services combined. But much of it just isn't for me. I have found that randomly clicking on a song on Artlist or Soundstripe, I have liked the thing more than a typical click on Epidemic. I'm quite sure that there are more good songs on Epidemic Sound than there are sounds, period, in either of the others. But it's just not super fun to use the website, which makes the selection more frustrating. I don't really care about having that large a catalog to choose from. And if you do, well, there you go, decision made. One thing unique to Epidemic is a similar to button that brings you to a list of other similarly tagged songs. I like this. My guess is that the other services don't have enough songs to really make that function the way you'd want it to. With Epidemic, a click will bring up a lot of similar options. And if you find something that is close but not quite to what you're looking for, it is a definite help. If you're trying to collect a lot of similar songs, it's also great. But that leads to the oh-so-critical question. What can you actually do with all these songs? It's complicated. All three have very different licensing structures, which also results in radically different pricings, even more so than is immediately apparent. I read through the agreements, checked out the FAQs, and in a few cases actually contacted the companies themselves to make sure that I understood exactly where my money would be going. And I am going to go over exactly what I learned, so that you don't have to. Though maybe you should anyway. I want to start by clearing up some misleading information on the part of Epidemic Sounds FAQ. While it's not lying per se, they're definitely trying to make you think that their terms are uniquely permissive when they're not. This page about what makes Epidemic Sound different, that its recurring fee offers you mechanical synchronization and public performance rights, seems to be comparing itself to one-off libraries and not other subscription services. Both of the other services I'm talking about here offer the exact same thing. 
see licensing agreements here and here. Now, with that out of the way, Artlist is by far the most straightforward option, both financially and legally. You pay $199 billed annually. That's it. There's no monthly option and there aren't any tiered services. For $199 annually, you get everything that Artlist has to offer. And you can use that for literally any project forever, as long as it has a video component. Games, commercials, feature films, mediums that haven't even been invented yet. When you download a song, you have the license for that song in perpetuity, which is awesome. Soundstripe, which is just $135 for an annual subscription, is far less permissive. While its songs can be used even more widely, podcasts are included, any song can only be used once. At the time of download, you give Soundstripe the name of the project that song is going to go to, and you get a single-use license for that song. You can't just download a song that you kind of liked and may want to use down the road, which makes the latter part of their license claim that the song can be used in any medium currently known or later created entirely meaningless. That single-use license itself never expires, but because the company can add and remove songs at any time, it is entirely possible that a song you used on one project won't be there by the time you might want to use it again, even if you're still a subscriber. That's unfortunate. However, likely as a result of the more restricted licensing system, you don't need to do an annual subscription to Soundstripe. If you have a few projects coming up, you can join for one month or several at $15 a month, get licenses for songs for just those projects, and then be on your merry way. Soundstripe is also different from Artlist in that it can offer you access to a collection of 10,000 or so sound effects for use on your projects. Artlist doesn't have sound effects in its catalog, though a now over Cyber Week deal of 50 free sound effects with your subscription hints that they may have some kind of premium offering in the future. However, Soundstripe's $135 price doesn't include the sound effects. To access those, the price jumps all the way to $245 a year with no monthly option, but the same licensing restrictions, where it's perhaps even more frustrating. Which brings us to the most complicated of the three, Epidemic Sound. Unlike its competition, Epidemic Sound, as considered here on this channel, cannot be used for projects not intended for social media consumption. YouTube, fine. Twitch, fine. Facebook, Instagram, fine. But a movie theater? Vimeo even? Nope. This is a service for creators who are content creating a very specific type of content. It's called the creator subscription, and it's priced differently for me than it would be for Casey Neistat. Their licensing structure is less restrictive than Soundstripe's, but more than Artless. When you download a song or sound from Epidemic, you have unlimited license to use it in projects until your subscription becomes inactive. As with Soundstripe, all licenses on existing projects will remain in place after you are no longer an Epidemic subscriber, but you will no longer be able to use what you've downloaded in new projects. You get all that? To be honest, I went into this process pretty sure where I was going to end up with the cheapest one. <laughs> Because if you haven't noticed, I'm probably never going to see any kind of financial return on this channel. But I was struck by a distinct realization that none of them really deserves that moniker. I keep following circular logic down the rabbit hole. If I make things not for YouTube, as I intend to do, Epidemic Sound isn't as appealing as it would have been if this was a different kind of channel. Also. It's terribly designed. Artlist has that sweet, sweet licensing system, but is more expensive for just music, even if I can have that music forever. Soundstripe is the cheapest by far for music alone, but if my logic for skipping Epidemic is that I want to be able to use it on outside 
projects, then I should get the package that includes sound effects, at which point it is no longer cheaper at face value, even if it offers me more creative flexibility for the duration of the subscription. And then I'm back to whether I really need this for anything other than YouTube in the first place. Epidemic Sound, by limiting platforms, sidesteps this issue entirely. And it's not a bad price either. So the question of what do you need this for is critical here. And it's obviously different for every person. So let's break down three bullet points each. Artlist.io has the least restrictive licensing system, the darkest aesthetic, and the highest price tag if all you want is to put music behind your YouTube videos. Epidemic Sound has the biggest library, and it's not even close, the kind of licensing agreement one would expect from a company that makes money off of subscriptions. Terrible design. Soundstripe has a limited, comparatively frustrating licensing agreement. Tesla as a customer, apparently. The lowest annual fee. So what did I ultimately go with? At least for now, Soundstripe. After weighing everything, including the types of non-YouTube projects I intend to do over the next year, this now over $87 Cyber Week annual fee was just too good to pass up. I don't know if I'll end up adding the sound effects, which are not included, but I didn't need them at the moment. And if I decide to in the near future, it will be prorated for an upgrade to the same price as Artlist, which is again, music only. So that's nice. But without that discount and the chasm in cost differential, I likely would have paid a smaller premium for Artlist just because of that agreement. I guess I'm not sure. It's a question I will need to address in 12 months. Epidemic sound is definitely the best for certain types of people, but it's not for me. Royalty-free music subscription services. 7.8 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, that is great. If not, I'm sorry. I hope to see you next week.